With the launch of Amendment 2 of the Wiring Regulations, almost all the page numbers have changed and there have been many new regulations created. In this video from Learn the Electrics, we will look at the table of tables. This is an often overlooked section of the book, but understanding this section and being able to use it proficiently will certainly help you in the exam and this video gives you the new and updated information. So what is the table of tables? Why is it so useful to finding answers and how do we use it? What is surprising is that it is only three pages long but almost nobody ever uses it and yet it is so very important to exam success and for me a really crucial thing to know. Used correctly these three pages will save you a lot of time and a lot of worry in the exam. Let's start by looking at where to find table of tables in the regulation book and we'll be using the brown book amendment 2. Begin by turning to the main contents page on page 3. At the bottom of page 3 you will see table of tables and scanning along to the right hand side you will find that it begins on page 573. So let's go there now. There are three pages to table of tables, pages 573, 574 and 575. That's it, but their usefulness is enormous. So how will table of tables help you in the 18th edition exam or indeed any exam on the wiring regulations? The 18th edition exam has 60 multiple choice questions. There are eight parts to the book plus the appendices. But part 4 and 5 alone will account for about 30 questions. That's 50% of the exam questions in just 180 pages. The table of tables can reduce your search time for answers because the tables of part 4 and 5 are listed on just one page and a bit. The appendices are another big section, almost 200 pages, and these tables are covered by just two pages in table of tables. It's much easier to start your search with just one or two pages than several hundred. We can look at table of tables now and understanding how to use them, how they are laid out is very important. If you want to make things easier in the exam, get to know table of tables. Pause the video and find pages 573 to 575. Following what happens over the next few slides will help your understanding. The top half of page 573, shown here in green, is the section for part 4. All the table numbers begin with the number 4. The tables relating to part 5 are on the bottom half of page 573 and a few lines on page 574. And they all begin with the number 5. Getting to know where the different parts are placed is so helpful when it comes to looking for information. Part 6 is next, the testing section. Just one line on page 574, but an important table nonetheless. Learn to know where this is. Then a few lines for the part 7 tables to do with special locations. The rest of the table of tables, that is, most of page 574 and all of page 575 are on the appendices. Just looking at this section, coloured beige, you can see just how many tables there are in the appendices and how using table of tables will reduce your search time so dramatically. Let's do a few example questions to show how this works. Question 1 then. What is the maximum disconnection time for a TT system with a nominal voltage of 100 volts AC and in the exam there will be four choices of answer. We should know the disconnection times are to do with keeping the user safe from the effects of electrical faults and we know there will be a table for this. Safety is part 4 and so we should begin our search on page 573 in this section where all the numbers begin with the number 4, the top half of the page. On page 573 the first line is table 421.1 called maximum disconnection times and it tells you that the table is on page 65. If we go to page 65, there is the table and there is the answer. 
Find the answer in the table and we should choose answer C, 0 0.3 seconds. Another exam style question now. When testing an electrical system with a nominal voltage of 400 volts AC, what is the minimum value of insulation resistance that is considered satisfactory and what test voltage should be applied? And again, four potential answers. Testing is part six of the book and there's a table for this answer. Turn to page 574 and there is the only entry. This is table 64, minimum value of insulation resistance and it directs us to page 234. The answer is 1 mega ohm and 500 volts DC. Answer A uses a small letter M. This is milliohms and is wrong. And an AC test voltage is not used. Answer C uses a capital letter M. This indicates mega ohms. And the DC test voltage is used, which is correct. Therefore, choose answer C. Be very alert to this type of question where the answer is almost correct. The right number but the wrong letter or term after it. It is done on purpose to test your understanding and observation skills and catches many people out. And another question example. What is the rating factor, CA, of 70 degrees centigrade thermoplastic cable for an ambient air temperature of 40 degrees centigrade? Let's find the answer. This question has been included deliberately to show you a problem. This is a question from the appendices, but no amount of searching will show you the correct table. You need a table that says rating factor CA for an ambient air temperature on page 574. But only rating factor CA for an ambient ground temperature is shown. This is an omission from the book. The correct table should be there, but it isn't. Follow the rating factor table 4B2 for ground to page 441. And above it is the rating factor table 4B1 for air temperature. Enter this into your book now, somewhere near to table 4B2 on page 574. Questions on this table often come up in the exam and you need to find the correct table. It should say table 4B1, rating factor CA for ambient air temperatures other than 30 degrees centigrade. And include the page number 441. We now have the right table on the right page, table 4B1. Find the column for 70 degrees centigrade thermoplastic. Find the row for 40 degrees centigrade ambient temperature. And where the two cross is the answer. And our answer is A, 0 0.87. Here are some more useful tables to remember. I include them because they do appear as exam questions quite often. This all helps to help you to know where you should be looking. Exam setters just love tables. It's easy for them to make questions on tables and knowing table of tables and how to use it can help you to improve your exam score and pass mark. Here are some tables that are often used for exam questions. Here's the first one. In this example, what lighting symbol is this? This symbol, or one of its neighbours, often appears as a question. You should by now know that the answer will be in a table. Look in Table of Tables on page 574, then find the entry for Table 55.3. This is titled explanation of symbols used in luminaires, in control gear for luminaires, and in the installation of luminaires. And it tells us to go to page 224 for the answer. Another one. Questions often come up on Twin and Earth Cable. Look at page 575 and find table 4D5. Now look at what the regulations call Twin and Earth Cable. They call it 70 degrees centigrade thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable with a protective conductor. And it tells us the table is on page 456. A typical question on this table might ask, what is the voltage drop per ampere per meter for six millimeter 
70 degrees centigrade thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable with a protective conductor. Table 4D5 on page 456 will tell us the answer. And here we are on page 456, table 4D5, and there is our answer. And another example. Here we are showing two tables on selecting devices and device functions. Questions can be asked on one or both of these tables, and so many times exam candidates look at the wrong table. They are often confused, one for the other. On page 184 is table 537.4. Look at the title. Guidance on the selection of protective, isolation and switching devices. Think of this as something that will open or close the circuit, break the flow of electricity. But what can each type of device be used for? Is it suitable for isolation of the circuit? Can it be used for emergency switching? And can it be used for everyday functional switching? Think of it this way. Can you use a fuse for emergency switching? The answer, obviously, is no. By the time you got your screwdriver and spanner out and removed the fuse, you're long dead. On page 191 is the second of these tables. Table A, 53.1. And it's called Device Functions and Coordination. What type of protection do they give to the circuit? Some devices, circuit breakers for example, will give overload protection and short circuit protection, but they will not offer any RCD protection. Learn to differentiate between the two tables. They are so useful in the exam and in everyday working life too. A short summary then. Table of tables is only three pages, but its usefulness in finding answers is immense. Many exam questions will be based around tables. Even if the answer is not in a table, finding a table related to the question will get you into the right part of the book, at least within a few pages of the answer. Learn to use table of tables and take the time to actually understand it and how it is laid out. Together with the contents pages, the table of tables provides the vital information to help you to search quickly and easily for the exam answers. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.